everyone, Michael Petrovich, Petrovich Team Home Loan. So in this video, we're gonna go over just the basics, how to qualify for a home loan in Papillion, Nebraska. The uh, reason we're doing it in Papillion, Nebraska is because that's where we're located. Um, so we're a local lender in town in Papillion, and we can meet up with you face-to-face -to, -face to go over the, this in detail because there is a lot to go over um, in a lot of cases to qualify for a loan. There's The rules just keep getting deeper and deeper as you kind of uh, get into them, just because there's so many different ways people are paid income there's different ways credit is structured um, assets come from all different sources so um, as you kind of dig into it it can the rules can keep expanding out and there's addendums to the rules so just the basics for now um, first would be income so uh, if you're just a salaried employee an hourly employee um, easy enough uh, we just verify uh, how much your gross salary is how much your gross or how much your hourly pay is and then your average hours a week and we use the gross monthly for your income now if you're salaried uh, or hourly plus a bonus or commission or overtime, we can use that. But in those cases, we have to dig a little deeper. So we're going to need a two-year history of your bonus, your overtime, um, and your commissions to use that. We're going to use a two-year average just because that income is fluctuating um, and they want to see what it averages out to be over two years. Now, if you haven't received that income for two years or you haven't been at your job for two years, a lot of times and most times we cannot use that income. We have to qualify it just on your base income. So in these situations, uh, you might uh, think you're making a lot of money, but what we can actually use is a lot less and you might not qualify for as big a house as you want. So we might have to plan ahead, either um, getting a co-signer. Um, there's various options we can do, get a co-signer, um, maybe just wait it out so we can actually use that, that commission income um, to figure out how to get you in the house that you want um, that is based on your income. So that's something to consider that if you're getting commission, overtime, bonuses, a lot of times we can't use it if you haven't got it for a long enough period of time. Um, so employment. So this kind of goes into that two-year history thing. So um, we don't always need a two-year history of employment. Um, you don't have to be at the same job for two years. They will want to see some form of employment for two years uh, to qualify. So uh, this rarely happens, but if you just graduated high school, um, have been at your job for a year, did work in high school, even if you have a solid income, great credit uh, with that job just out of high school, you cannot buy a house until you have that two-year history. Now, if you had a part-time job in high school, that actually factors into your two-year history, so we can use that. So you could work at a fast food restaurant for part-time, um, get a salary position right out of high school, and we can actually use your full salary, and you can buy a house right away because we can use that two-year history with that part-time employment. But if you didn't work in high school, can't use that. Um, college, college can be counted as employment history. So if you didn't work in college, but you went to school for what you're now employed with, so if you get out of school, start a job as a salary employee, you can actually buy a house right after graduating, right after getting that job, as long as we can show that you went to school prior for that position. So um, in those cases, they're gonna want copies of your transcripts to make sure that the job you have now relates at least somewhat to what you went to school for. And then we can use that as a two-year history if needed. So um, employment history is important, um, but you do not have to be at your job for two years. That's a misconception is that people think because you have to have a two-year history, you have to have a two-year history at the same job. Not the case. Uh, you can start a new job right away as long as it's got a base salary or a base uh, hourly pay, and we can verify you're going to get you know, whatever hour, 35, 40 hours a week. We can use that right away as long as you have an overall two-year history of employment or the equivalent with school. Okay, next is um, assets. This is the part that really um, frustrates people a lot with the assets. One, because they're going to dig into your assets. They're going to get bank statements. Uh, they're going to they're verify large deposits. A large deposit is a deposit that's more than 50% of your, your uh, qualifying income going into your account that's not payroll. So if there's a large deposit going into your account that's more than half your, your gross income, they're gonna wanna know where it came from. They're gonna document it. If it came from um, another account, they're gonna want information on that account. Uh, they're gonna paper trail everything all the way back for those large deposits. And the reason they do this, and this, this is part that confuses people and frustrates them, is that um, there are places where your, your money can come from and places where it can't come from. So, uh, you know, people always wonder, you know, if, if, as long as I have the money at the end, what does it matter? Well, it, it does matter to conventional Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA. Uh, there's approved sources, unapproved sources. Um, uh, unapproved sources are taking out debt to get the cash closed. So you can't take out money on a credit card. You can't take out an unsecured loan to get the money for the cash needed to close. That's why they're going to do a paper trail everything to make sure that's not what you did. So that's why they dig into that. Um, you can't take out loans against your 401k, take out loans against... Um, your life insurance, uh, you can take out loans against a car or another house. So they, you can do things that are secured by something. So uh, if it's secured by, you know, your retirement account, you can take out those loans. 401k loans are very common on 
uh, especially for first-time home buyers, taking out a loan against a 401k to buy a house. Um, if you have another house, you can take a line of credit um, or a bridge loan and qualify for a new house with that. Um, but it can't come from unsecured sources like credit cards or um, installment loans. You can get gifts from family members. So you can get a gift. You cannot get a loan from a family member, but you can get a gift. They can give you the money and just uh, they verify with the gift letter that they're not loaning you the money. They're just giving it to you. Um, every loan program, Fannie Mae, uh, FHA, VA have their own rules about who can give you the money and how it's transferred. But generally it has to be a family member or in some cases, just someone that's immediately involved with the transaction, a fiance, uh, maybe maybe a boss on occasion, they'll allow your, your boss, your employer to give you money for the down payment. It can't come from just a coworker, but uh, there are certain situations where a non-family member can give you money, but really just need to kind of sit down and talk about where that money's coming from so we can uh, word it and structure it the best way possible. And finally, um, so qualifying for home loan, the third thing they're gonna look at is, um, is credit. So they're going to look at your credit scores, your credit history. Um, you know, we don't need a, don't always need a, a 12 month or 24 month history on credit. It does, it does help to have some active credit that's going to help your scores. And it does help on certain programs do require uh, a minimum amount of history on the credit report. There are things we can do um, to get you some credit history fairly quickly, an authorized user on a, on a parent's credit card, things like that. That stuff we'll have to discuss um, face to face when we sit down to see where your credit's at and what we can do to make sure you fit within the guidelines of the program, but you don't need, you don't always need that, uh, that longer credit history, even though it does help qualify you and does help your scores. As long as you have an active credit history, that is, that is good. That is in good standing. Um, things like bankruptcies and foreclosures. If you do have those, there are waiting periods, no matter how good your score is, there are certain waiting periods. Every loan program is different. It goes from two years to seven years on um, each program. But if you just had a bankruptcy, just had a foreclosure, no matter what your, your financial situation is after that, there are waiting periods to qualify for financing. So um, if you have declared bankruptcy, we might have to look at it and just say, okay, you know, we have to look at the date that bankruptcy was um, dismissed or finished in the case of a, a chapter 13, and then kind of figure out when's the earliest we can get you to buy a house. Um, and then if there is a period we have to wait to, um, that wait, if that waiting period is in effect, we can just look to see if there's something we can do with your credits if needed to improve it while we're waiting for that, that bankruptcy to kind of just to time out basically. So. If you do have a bankruptcy foreclosure, uh, just reach out to a loan officer um, and tell them the date that it was filed. In the case of a foreclosure, it's going to be the date that the bank took ownership of the property, not the date you filed the foreclosure. In cha uh, Chapter 7, a bankruptcy is going to be the date it was dismissed by the courts. Um, so we have to get that exact date down so we know the exact date that you can now purchase a home. Um, collections, charge-offs. Um, I would say never, never touch these until you talk to somebody. So a lot of times paying off a collection and a charge-off is harmful um so it might be better in some cases just to leave them if they're aged out on your credit report if they're just old collections a lot of times it's just better just to leave them and take that money that you would use to pay them off and use it for more reserves on the assets for a higher down payment maybe to pay off some active debt that's going to help your credit scores more whereas paying off a charge off or a collection it might actually hurt your credit um, even though you zeroed out it looks like it's updated because that it updated to the new balance and a lot of times these collections don't report for several years and they just get older but paying them off um, updates them on the credit report. And the credit report doesn't know that you just paid it off. All it knows is that now you have a refreshed collection on your credit report. So best to leave those. Talk to somebody first. Don't pay them off and then talk to a loan officer. Talk to somebody first before you pay those off. Nine times out of ten, you just want to leave them. Um, max out credit cards. This is a good way to get your scores up. If uh, it really hurts your scores to max out a credit card. So if you have a Target card with a with a five hundred dollar balance, uh, if you can pay that down to two fifty, that's going to bump your scores up quite a bit. If you can pay it down to zero. It's going to bump them up even more. So a lot of times when people come in and they have less than perfect credits, first thing I'll look at is uh, their credit cards. What's the smallest credit card they have and what's the balance on it? And can paying that down um, help? So if you have a $5,000 credit card that's maxed out to $5,000 and one that has a $300 limit that's maxed out, let's pay off that $300 credit card first because that's going to help you out more. And then we'll start attacking the um, bigger credit cards because what it looks at is percentage, um, you know, if your high credit limit is 300, it's looking at what percentage of that are you using up. So the smaller ones are going to give you more bang for your buck by paying those off first. And that is going to bump your scores up. So the first thing we're going to look at is, can you pay off a credit card, a small one to bump your scores up? Um, which is why it's always good to come in early and talk to somebody um, to see where you're at in your credits and give us that couple months, maybe to get your scores up and put you in a better position when you are ready to buy. Um, okay. A big thing right now is student loans, student loans, um, you know, people come in a lot of times with these huge student loans and the payments are deferred, but for the purpose of the loan, I have to add a payment. So you might come in with a $250,000 uh, student loan 
with no payment, but I have to use 1% of that balance as a payment. And a lot of times that means you qualify for a smaller house or don't qualify at all because that payment's too high. So there are things we can do, not much, but there are things we can do to help with that. But if you do have student loans, even though you're not making payments on them, a lot of times we do have to count those towards your debts. Some loan programs have different rules for how we count them and some are better, some are worse as far as what we have to use for a payment on a student loan. So always good to talk to a loan officer if you have a lot of student loans um, to see what we can do to get you to qualify and how much you qualify for with that student loan on your credit. All right, so there's a lot of stuff here and actually the rules just keep going deeper um, as you get into them. So really the best thing to do is as early as possible, and we always stress this, is come in and talk to somebody, even if you're not buying for another six months, even a year, talk to somebody, see where you're at, um, pull your credit, do a full application, and then let's put a plan in place to get you ready to go um, so you're in the best position possible when you do buy a house. Um, I know it's hard to not you know, go find a house first and then try to figure out the financing, but if you can do the financing first, you're gonna be, it's gonna be a lot less stressful. Um, we're gonna get a lot better rate, a lot better terms on the loan um, when you are ready to buy. All right, thanks a lot.